in the parking lot. There is no count. There is evidently no no uh, recording of it. I mean, they, Walmart has the best security system in the world, in the nation. They do. They do. I know that because I worked in criminal justice, and somebody I put on house arrest got arrested because of that. And I, I just know that that's the way it is. There was lots of witnesses out there because it was Christmas time. There are no witnesses except for one that came forward. Anyway, when I got to the scene, um, they had it locked off. I jumped off. I said, you know, I'm here to see if some, they, I heard they shot my son. They said, what's his name? I told them. They said, oh, he's at the hospital, ma'am. I said, okay. Well, then I saw his truck. I stopped again and went over there, and they said, you can't come in here, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's at the hospital. I go to the hospital. I wait there for about three hours. They won't let me see him. They won't, they won't tell me anything. They just said, we can't tell you anything. Finally, they call me in. I don't remember a lot because I'm still like freaking out. I'm thinking my son's alive because he's in the hospital. There was police all over the all over the hospital when they took me into a room. Then they started questioning me. I said, "I'm not going to answer your questions. I'm not going to answer your questions. Where's my son?" They wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't tell me. They finally told me. They killed him. That's all I remember. Uh, they wouldn't let us identify his body. They wouldn't let us do anything. They just they didn't give me no information. Nothing. They wouldn't say nothing. Um, I had a friend who does cremation, and I knew I'd have to cremate him. I didn't have the money to bury him. Um, when I went to see his body, that's when I, it just really got to me. Like I said, when I saw what they did to him, then I was just furious. I was, and that's what keeps me going, is not the revenge, as the love that I have for my son. I make this very clear to people. My son was a human being. I don't care if he looked like a gang member or didn't. I don't care if he was on drugs or he wasn't. He was not committing a crime. He was not given his due process. We have given, they are allowed their due process. Unfortunately, citizens are not given that. And it keeps happening and happening and happening. So it's a tough fight. You know, I'm glad you won yours. But it's a tough fight when you're trying to fight law enforcement. They are protected by their union. They are protected by everything and everybody. The DA justifies everything they do. The judges don't want to take it because they work with them. You know, that's another problem we're having. Judges don't want to take the case because they work with the police. Uh, you know, then they come in and they harass people. Uh, Joel, Joel Acevedo, especially, his mom still lives directly where they shot him. They have harassed her so much. They have stopped her. They go to her house. The day after they killed him, they went to her house and said, are you having a party? She said, no, I'm grieving my family. Well, who's in here? And, and those, it, it, it's just the whole aftermath. Manuel Diaz, they shot him in broad daylight. They shot him first in, like in the buttocks. Went up to him and shot him in the head. They did it to another gentleman that I know, Martin Hernandez. They shot him in the back when he stopped. They went up to him and they shot him in the head. So they're not just shooting these young men. They're literally executing him. Like I said, when I had to see my son, and he's got two bullet holes through his head, one through his heart, you executed my son. I don't care how you want to say it. You did not kill my son. You executed him. And this is what's been happening. We, are, we have a very tough time. You know, Anaheim is uh, ruled by Disneyland. <laughs> so it's a tough fight. Um, I have been, I have put my story out there. I've talked to everybody <clears throat> almost for two years, well, almost three years. Nobody, and I protested in front of the police department for almost three years. Nobody paid any attention until the recent two shootings that happened in, in July. When they did that one during the day, and then after they shot him, they left him twitching on the, on the ground for three minutes. They didn't call an ambulance or nothing. I went to the site where they shot him the next day to pay my respects. You could still see the brain matter on the, on the grass. But uh, anyway, after they shot him, they ended up, the community was upset. So they were like, what are you doing? You know, and they just, they started shooting the, the people in the community with bean bags and, and rubber bullets. Um, they let the dogs loose. The, d the dog went after a child in a, in a stroller. The father went to protect the child and he got bitten on the arm. They arrested like, I don't know, 20 some people. Some of these people had never been arrested in their life. So now they have a record because they arrested him for starting a riot or for whatever the case may be. You know, the mother's standing out there and um, like I said, this is all, it's a devastation that they do. It's a devastation. They don't know what we go through. They don't know what it does to us as a family. Uh, this is why this young man is going through this. My son had five boys. And like I said, now they're in the system. I have to fight that. Um, it's just, 
it goes on and on. The families separate, they get together. I mean, it just, they don't even care. They don't even care. They don't care what they do. This last one that they shot that was unarmed, the mayor did finally go in and say, you know, you have my condolences. She was the only lucky one because none of us ever got that. And I'm glad that she got that. I'm happy they gave her that. But they don't do it for any of the other families. They don't care. It's just like, okay, well, we shot him, and you know what? He's a gang member, so what? That's exactly what we hear. That's what we hear. He was a gang member. I'm sorry, my son, maybe he looked like one, but he wasn't one. He was a father of five. He was, you know, just trying to live his life and just trying to make it for him and his, his, his family. You know, uh, Joel Acevedo was 21 years old. Manuel was 24. Um, they tried shooting Joel Acevedo's brother earlier that day before they shot him. So these are things that continue to happen, and although the Kelly Thomas, you know, that's brought to light a lot of the things that police have done, they had the video. What's brought to light this recently was that they had video for Manuel Diaz. So unless you have video, so that the whole world can see, nobody believes what's happening. It's like, well, you know, police, you know, they're, they're, they fear for their life. Well, you know what, you, when you took that job, I'm sorry, you knew it was tough. You knew it was a tough job because it, it, it is a tough job, and I'm not saying, I'm not bashing all police. I'm bashing the ones that continuously get away with this stuff, and they are still on the job. They get promoted. They get promoted after they do these things. And it's like, it's, how do they go to bed at night? How do they go to bed at night? You know, because they, they just continuously do this. We've tried talking to the gang unit and to other people, and they're like, oh, well, we've, you know, we're trying to, no, you're not. Because you're still going in the, these neighborhoods and you're still harassing them. You know, there's no program, there's nothing. You know, they talk about these kids and I tell them, they're not gangs. They live there. They have an area this big to hang around. So this is where they hang out. Does not make them a gang. There might be criminal activity, but doesn't make everybody a gang. And just because you look a certain way, you know, like I told the mayor, okay, my son was bald because he had no hair, so he had to shave it. And yeah, he had tattoos. But if you're shooting young men because they're bald and they have tattoos, then half of your force should be shot because they're bald and they have tattoos. And he looked at me and he was like, uh, okay. He didn't have too much of a response because you know what, I, I will tell them. I've told the mayor, I've told the city, I've told everybody, I've told the council. Um, we don't want this to happen to another mother. You know, I mean, it's bad enough people shoot each other. You know, and they, this is what they bring out. Well, you know, the gangs shoot each other. Okay, that's one thing, okay. But the fact remains is now the people that are supposed to protect and serve are shooting them. So they don't trust anybody. And it's just gotten to be so out of hand, and I say this nationwide because it's just happening all the time. I hear about this from people. I mean, I get a phone call because people know what I've been doing, especially here in Orange County. Every time somebody gets shot, I get a message or a phone call. They just shot somebody in, in, in Santa Ana over the weekend. I got a text message at one o'clock in the morning. Teresa, they just shot another person. He was begging for his life. This kid was 14 years old. This yes, in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. It, it, it happens and it continuously happens and, and I've got a, a nonprofit that I just started called Law Enforcement Accountability Network. And it's a tough thing, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, they shy away from it, especially, you know, when you ask for donations and stuff, people are like, well, I don't know, that's going against law enforcement, but, and that's, that's my big problem, but I'm not going to change what it is. I'm not going to change what I'm doing. I am trying to work with the city and, you know, the powers that be in Anaheim, because we do want to make it, we want to change. We want to change. They need to change. They need to change. So we're working on that, me and the, like I said, myself and the mothers, we're trying to make that change. We want a positive change because we don't want another person shot like that. But we will never, never stop wanting accountability for, the, for our sons that have been killed. And that's what they're trying to do is trying to make us change. I'm not going to change that. I'm never going to stop wanting accountability. I told them, they messed with the wrong woman. If it takes the rest of my life, I will fight them every single day till the day I die. Teresa, I'm right there with you. Thank you.